Hey, Dino here. Today I want to talk about signed URLs. Uh, signed URLs are um, in Google Cloud Storage. It's a way that Google provides that allows you to grant time-limited access to a resource to anyone who possesses the URL, regardless of whether they have a Google account. Now, why would you want to do that? Um, Google Cloud Storage stores files, anything, in uh, what, they're, what are called buckets. Uh, and cloud storage, in general, has been a source of some data leaks historically. Uh, with other cloud service providers, some of the cloud storage buckets have been left open by their customers and people uh, find these open cloud storage buckets and are able to download data um, that is unintentionally left out in the open. With Google Cloud Storage, the storage buckets are by default locked down, uh, so non-public access is not allowed. Uh, you have to take explicit uh, action in order to permit public access to a cloud storage bucket. So generally that's not a problem. Uh, instead, with Google Cloud Storage, you need credentials to access the objects in the cloud storage bucket. So if I upload an image or um, a PDF or my tax return, uh, I'm going to need credentials in order to get there, uh, in order to get access to that, that thing, that object in the cloud storage bucket. Uh, the signed URL mechanism is a way to grant access to people without full credentials. So it's a time-limited access uh, to the cloud storage bucket or an object inside the cloud storage bucket uh, that allows them to get or upload, download or upload uh, the object just for that limited time. And you might want to do this, for example, when um, people without credentials uh, you want to allow them to upload data to you. Now, Google provides um, a tool, a command line tool, GSUtil, uh, that does a bunch of things. And one of the things it can do is generate a signed URL. Um, so this is a command line tool. You can download it on your workstation. You produce a signed URL. And it ends up looking like, like this. Um, so it's pretty lengthy. Um, but it is a usable URL. This one, um, according to the configuration that they've set up, is good for getting um, a, uh, a cat picture out of a bucket named example bucket. Uh, and so if I just perform a, a get on this, theoretically, it should uh, allow me to download that, that cat picture. You can also use GSUtil to uh, create a URL that will be used for uploads, for put. Um, but what if you want to include this idea of signed URLs in an API-centric information architecture? Um, for that purpose, I produced a, an Apigee callout that does the generation of the signed URL for you. So it's like GSUtil, but you can include it in an Apigee API proxy. Why would you want to do that? It's um, the advantage of using that would be uh, to allow Apigee to first act as a security mediator before generating the, um, the signature for that signed URL. So it might check an API key or an OAuth token. Um, whatever your API security uh, conventions are, Apigee can enforce that and only after that generate the signed URL. So it's a nice way to couple um, Apigee API management with um, the ability to, to upload to Google Cloud Storage. The interesting technique is here, the client, the application that connects to Apigee, uh, will present its credentials, its Apigee credentials. Apigee can then verify or validate those credentials, generate the signed URL, and send it back to the client. When the client uploads or downloads from Google Cloud Storage, it's going direct. So it's not going through Apigee. What does that mean? That means that the limitation, the payload size limitation that you get with Apigee, which is 10 megabytes, no longer applies. So if you have a 100 megabyte file that you'd like to allow a client to upload to Google Cloud Storage, this is a good way to do it. Apigee acts as the control channel to generate that signed URL, and then the client uploads directly to Google Cloud Storage the large file. Um, really nice way to do that. So what I've done is produced a, uh, a callout with some custom Java code that implements this. You don't need to write Java or even compile this in order to use it. You can just use it as is. Um, 
here's an example of what the, the policy configuration would look like. You get to specify the, um, the service account key. So that's a JSON key that you would generate and download. Um, the verb, the, the resource, or uh, alternatively bucket name and object name, and the expiry. Uh, and then you get a um, assigned URL just in the same form that we saw a little bit earlier. So let's have a look and see this uh, actually working. The first thing I've got to do is get um, a uh, service account. Uh, so let's uh, set that up. I'll go into Cloud Console, Identity and Access Management, go to Service Accounts, and I'll create a new one. Uh, we'll call this GCS. Uh, access three, uh, and this is for uh, generating signed URLs uh, within Apigee. We're going to um, create this service account, download the service account key, uh, and provide that key to Apigee. So what I want is a GCS role. I'm going to say storage bucket owner, um, and that's all I need to do. I don't need to grant uh, any users access to that. Next thing I'm going to do is go to storage, go to cloud storage. Uh, oh, uh, before I move on, GCX Access 3, I need to download, uh, generate and download a key. So that's going to be really important. Um, so I'll ask for that in JSON format, and we'll need to remember that. 8F. I need to remember that and use that later as we provide that to um, to Apache. So the next thing I need to do is go to um, cloud storage, and I'll go to the browser. Now I've got a couple of different buckets already created in this uh, Google Cloud Storage project, but I'm going to use this one called um, GCS Testing. And uh, what I want to do is grant access to um, that. GC that new service account that I just created so it'll be GCS access 3 um, I'll add that in uh, and the role that I'll need to add will be um, uh, GCS uh, storage uh, full control so um, I, I want just GCS objects I don't need to create new buckets so we'll just make um, this this new account, uh, this new service account, available to uh, or accessible, authorized to either get or or put uh, objects into this storage bucket. So you can see right now I have one object in my storage bucket. Uh, we'll get back to this uh, in a little bit. So I've got my Google Cloud storage thing set up. I got my service account. I have a bucket uh, that I know the name of. Uh, I got the permissions set properly. Um, now I want to show you the API proxy, uh, the example API proxy that I put together to uh, exercise that um, that uh, Java callout or demonstrate that. So I've already uploaded and imported and deployed this thing. Um, you can see the summary here. There's a couple of different endpoints. The one um, that is most interesting to us is this v4 endpoint. Uh, and um, there's a couple of examples there, a couple of flows, let's call them. One uses example data, uh, and I'll show you that. Um, that one, the, the basically, uh, it's it just for, you know, so you don't have to set up all that... Um, that those things that I just described, you can use um, example data, and this uses a, a fake uh, resource name and a fake service account key. This, this service account key won't actually work, but it'll allow the proxy to work. Uh, so that's one example, one flow. And then the second is, um, uh, will will be um, we'll use an actual service account key and will actually work so this will not be an example this will actually work and what it does is it um, it uh, pulls the service account key from the KVM um, there's some fault checking and then it just generates that um, v version 4 signed URL um, the parameters here in this policy it specifies the service account key it specifies the verb um, the bucket, the object, and the expiry. 
uh, and the result will be one of those long URLs. So let's let's have a look at this. Uh, I'm going to turn on trace, so we'll be able to see this um, live now. Um, go to my terminal, and I'm going to invoke this thing. So what I want is first a get on uh, endpoint uh, sign URL v for, and I think it's called example. This is the example that I, I talked to you about um, that uses fake data. So it's it's giving me access to this resource. Uh, and by the way, this JSON output is just what's being generated by the API proxy. Uh, if you were going to use this Java callout in your API proxies, you could you know you could design this to do whatever you want. I, I just wanted to include this for um, diagnostic purposes. This is the actual signature. Uh, which is a, um, a, a hex encoded uh, byte stream. And this is the signed URL. So as we said, it's using example bucket and this um, name of an object called uh, catpix tabby. Uh, this is fake data. It's also using a fake uh, um, service account key. So this URL won't work, but this is what it would look like. So now let's uh, specify the actual um, service account key and, and use this thing for for real. So what I want to do uh, is I'm going to go flip back to my repo uh, and it tells me that's how it tells me about the um, about the example. This is what I need to do to set up my um, service account key. So I'm going to need to um, load the service count key into the KVM, and I'll specify all of that. Um, so I'm going to grab that. OK, now what I'd like to do is upload the file um, to my service account key uh, KVM. Uh, and we'll do that like that. So this is this is the file that I downloaded previously, uh, and the um, that JSON is now loaded into the encrypted KVM. So um, the API proxy should have access to it. So now flipping back into here, I've I've done that. Now to invoke it, uh, I want to specify uh, these things. Um, so let me do that. I'll just copy that. Um, my bucket is called, uh, let's check that again. This is the name of my bucket. And my object is called, um, well, let's see. Uh, got it. And that should give me a signed URL. Uh, that would be usable in a browser. So I could, for example, uh, use an unauthenticated browser window, incognito window, specify that browser, and sure enough, you can see I've downloaded that uh, existing object uh, without having authenticated to Google Cloud Storage beyond that signed URL. So that works for get. But now well, let's try maybe a little more interesting uh, option and that is um, a more interesting option would be to upload. So if you want to generate a signed URL that allows upload, uh, also specify a verb to that that same um, that same command, that same API request. So let's try that. Uh, I can specify uh, the verb equals put. Uh, I need to put in my and this is going to be uh, name of new object, newly uploaded object. Um, there is my signed URL. So let me grab that. Signed URL equals that. And now I should be able to uh, upload any arbitrary file into the bucket with uh, uh, into an object with the name that I previously specified. So let's try. Uh, and we have a JPEG file. So let me specify that signed URL. 
So that succeeded, and if I go back to my, my cloud storage bucket and refresh this, I should see, yes, I've uploaded uh, a new object. And this, is, this name is the thing that I specified when I generated the signed URL. Now you'll see the size of the object, the image is, is there. There is no content type, though, um, specified here. Uh, that's a separate option for um, for uploading. You need to generate the signed URL, including a content type header. So um, let's try that. Um, we'll try it uh, with following along the example. So if I want to include the content type, um, it would just be this additional field um, with my uh, with my upload. So let's do two commands ago. Uh, I need that additional field. Let's name it something else. This will be um, new uh, image.png. Um, so I specified the content type, and that once again will give me a signed URL. That's different than the previous one. So grab that. And then finally, um, I'll upload uh, the uh, a different image there. Upload file. What file? How about downloads um, that file? And I need to specify the content type header as promised. So the content type will be um, application PNG. And again, I need to specify that unique signed URL. Now I can continue to upload um, until the expiry of that signed URL. Uh, but if I specify the wrong um, content type, Let's call it image JPEG. Uh, I'm going to get a fair uh, violation. It's going to say, oh, you know, you've tried to upload something with an incorrect header. And that is because the signed URL includes that information and it, and it checks. Um, the Google Cloud Storage will check the uh, provided content type header against what was signed originally. So that's that's not going to work, but I can upload uh, the original file again until the expiry. And I had set, I think, 10 minutes, five minutes expiry on that um, on that URL. So if I switch now back to uh, the cloud storage uh, browser, you'll see that I've got a new image there and I've got a content type. OK, what did we see? We saw how you can use Apigee with a custom Java callout to generate signed URLs to allow Apigee to act as a control channel uh, for uploading to Google Cloud Storage buckets and for downloading from Google Cloud Storage buckets. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, hit me up in the comments if you've got any questions or suggestions. And uh, as always, keep it digital.